Welcome to episode two of a four room DVR setup with a TiVo Romeo. In this episode, I'll show you the installation and activation of the TiVo Romeo itself. Episode three will be the setup of TiVo minis in the other rooms where you want the multi DVR setup. And episode four will be setting up the TiVo streaming to both devices in home as well as out of the home. The TiVo Romeo came with a start here guide that includes seven easy steps for setting up your TiVo Romeo. This quick guide shows the most basic setup where you plug your TiVo into a cable jack in the wall. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a more common setup where you have your cable modem and your TiVo in your living room next to your main TV. Inside the TiVo Romeo box, it included a point of entry filter, which is nothing more than a small coax coupler that is female on both ends. The paper that it comes with shows you how to install it. I had to go to the outside of my house and find the entry point of the cable into a small box. I traced the incoming coax cable that goes into the box to the point where it plugs into the splitter that splits the cable that goes to all of the rooms in the house. I then unplugged the coax, screwed the PoE filter in, and then plugged it back in. Once I finished installing the PoE filter on the outside of the house, I went into the living room where I set up the TiVo. Because I'm putting the cable modem and the TiVo box in the same room, I'm going to need a two-way splitter which you can pick up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm using my own cable modem that I bought so I don't have to pay a monthly rental fee. The model I'm using is a Motorola Surfboard SB6141. First, run a short cable from the wall to the input on the coax splitter. Then run a cable from one of the outputs on the splitter to the coax in on the cable modem. Then I run an ethernet cable from the ethernet out on the cable modem to the WAN port on the router. Now I'm running my own personal router. If you have one of those all-in-one boxes that the cable company gave you, you can skip this step because it's your cable modem and your router built into one. Next, grab a Mocha adapter. You're essentially using the coax cables that are already run in your house to create a network so that your TiVo minis can talk to the main TiVo and stream content from it. Run another coax cable from the second output on the splitter to the coax in on the Mocha adapter. Next, run a coax cable from the TV slash STB out, which stands for set-top box, from the Mocha adapter to the cable slash antenna in on the TiVo. Then, run an ethernet cable from the Mocha adapter to a LAN port on your router. In this example, the cable I ran is orange. Run an ethernet cable from the ethernet port on your TiVo to another LAN port on your router. The cable I ran was yellow. Then connect your TiVo to your TV using an HDMI cable. Here is a wiring diagram that shows how the cables are run. To review, we come in from a cable jack in the wall to the coax splitter. From the two outputs on the splitter, we run one to the cable modem and one to the Mocha adapter. We then run an ethernet cable from the cable modem to the WAN port on the router. From the Mocha adapter, we run coax to the cable slash antenna on the TiVo box. Ethernet cables are then run from both the Mocha adapter and the TiVo to LAN ports on the router. Finally, we connect the TiVo to the TV with an HDMI cable. Once it is all wired up, power up the TiVo by plugging the power cable into it. I got one of those cool slide remotes with a keyboard on it. After powering it up, you'll see the welcome screen. Select your country, then begin the guided setup. After agreeing to the service terms, you'll be asked to enter your zip code. After that, your TiVo will ask you if you have an M card. You should have acquired one of these from your cable provider ahead of time. It is small and fits into the palm of your hand. Without unplugging the TiVo, turn it over and pop off what looks like a battery cover. Behind it, you'll find space for the cable card to be inserted. Insert the cable card, put the cover back on, and turn the TiVo back over. You'll then see a screen like this with a bunch of numbers on it. It will also have the phone number of your cable provider to call at the top. They need to add your M card to your account. The call was fairly quick for me. I just had to read off several numbers from the screen to them. Once the cable company has activated the M card against your account, the TiVo will automatically recognize and switch to this screen. From this point forward, it is fairly self-explanatory. TiVo connects to the TiVo service. You pick a name for your TiVo. After that, you choose your provider so that it knows the programming and channel lineup. It then verifies that you can see video on a particular channel. For me, it was the Home Shopping Network on channel 21. If you have subscribed to any premium channels, you tell your TiVo which ones. 
After completing the channel lineup, the TiVo will connect to the service again to check for updates. After the TiVo reboots itself, it applies any updates that it found. Once back up, I was seeing live TV. The whole setup took me about an hour, and I did it without a cable technician at the house. The green light on the front of the TiVo indicates that it is on, and the red light shows when a show is being recorded. In episode 3, I take a look at installing whole home DVR with TiVo Mini and Mocha adapter in every room where you want to be able to watch live TV or stream a previously recorded show from the main TiVo. The TiVo Mini also runs Netflix, which is a bonus. The TiVo Romeo can record up to four shows at once, making it the perfect hub for your recorded shows. You don't need an expensive DVR and a monthly charge to the cable company for every single room that you want to watch TV in. That's it for episode two. Thanks for watching and good luck with your installation.